Hey everyone, in this lesson, we're just gonna have a quick look through on what Python Turtle is, as this is gonna be um, one of the things that we're gonna be focusing on in this course. Turtle is a Python library that allows us to create simple algorithms, digital art, and interactive programs, okay? And through a series of commands, we can control a point on screen to draw and fill in shapes. So if you think about having a piece of paper, for example, and you have a pen, um, the turtle is basically the tip of your pen, so we can command it by telling it to move forwards, turn left. So learning programming with Python Turtle is going to be a great way of getting the fundamentals of how an algorithm works and how the concepts of programming work um, a lot easier as we can easily visualize what our code is doing at any time, okay? If we write a command to draw a circle, for example, we can instantly see that circle being drawn on screen. Hey everyone, in this lesson, we're actually gonna get started on learning Python Turtle and creating our first bit of code. So first of all, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of the example template code that it created for us right here. So at the bottom of the file, I'm just gonna click and drag to select everything and then backspace to remove it, okay? Uh, so now what we can do is start fresh with a blank slate. So first of all, before we do anything, we need to actually import Turtle because by default, Turtle isn't actually implemented into the Python language. There are a ton of different things known as libraries, which are basically like add-ons or extra packages um, that you can add to your programs in order to give them extra functionality. And Turtle is one of them. So we need to import Turtle into our program. And to do that, we can write the following line of code. Okay, we're gonna write from, turtle import asterisk okay so from the turtle library we want to import everything okay so an asterisk basically means everything so from the total library we want to import everything and you need to make sure that this is at the top of your program because when it comes to algorithms um, they are a step-by-step -step process okay we start with step one then two then three then so on and so forth Okay, if you're working with a recipe, you don't start halfway through, jump back to the start, jump to the end. No, you go one step at a time in order. So the first thing we need to do is import turtle. And then we can press enter to go to a new line. Okay, um, so we've imported turtle, but right now we don't really, we haven't really done anything. Okay, we've imported turtle, but we're not using it. So how do we use turtle? Well, in order to use Turtle, we need to give commands, okay? We need to assign steps to our algorithm for the computer to read. So, Turtle contains a large list of different commands and functionalities that we can use in order to draw stuff on screen. One of the most common commands that you'll be using is the forward command. And what this means is basically, I wanna get our Turtle and move it forward a certain distance. So, to do that, I'm gonna write forward like so. And then I'm gonna put two parentheses like this, okay? Um, an open and closing bracket. And inside of here is where we can specify a distance in terms of pixels. So let's just say we want our turtle to move uh, 100 pixels. Well, then we're just gonna put 100 in here, okay? So we have forward, and then inside of these two brackets here, we write the distance that we want to travel in terms of pixels. Now let's go up here to the run button and this is going to run our code. And as you can see, our turtle has started here at uh, the left-hand side and moved to the right 100 pixels. Now we specified forward, yet it moved to the right. And the reason why is because you need to think of the turtle as, some, as a top-down view, okay? We're looking at this turtle on the ground and it is gonna be moving in its forward direction relative to itself. So by default, the turtle is facing to the right of our screen um, and it's gonna be moving forwards along that direction, okay? Um, and it'll only ever move in another direction if we specify it to do so. Now, I can of course go over here and change the number from 100 to something such as 50. And if we click run again, you should see that it only moves half that distance, okay? So it's only moving 50 pixels now. So have a go at the forward command. Uh, you can change around this number, of course. You know, if you want to, you can add a number such as 500, and that means it's gonna be moving 500 pixels forward, uh, which probably might actually go off screen for us. And as you can see, yep, it's gone off screen because it's gone pretty fast. So I'm gonna bring that back down to 100. Click run again, and there we go. 
So in the next lesson, we are gonna be looking at a command which is gonna allow us to actually turn our turtle because right now we can only move in one direction. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In the previous lesson, we looked at setting up our code for the first time, okay? Creating our first step of the algorithm with the forward command. So in this lesson, we are gonna be looking at how we can actually turn our turtle, okay? Adding more steps to our algorithm, okay? So first of all, what we need to do is go to a new line. So we have the forward command, then we go to a new line because the way that the code works is again, similar to something like a recipe, for example. You start at the top and you move down. So step one, step two, step three. Whereas in the case of code, it's more so like lines, okay? We start with line one here, then go down, 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 and down. So the first thing we're doing here is importing the turtle library. So from turtle, we want to import everything. Then we go down to the forward command. The computer reads that and it executes whatever that needs to do, which is moving the turtle forward 100 pixels. And then what we can do is something else. And in this case, we want to actually turn the turtle. So how do we turn the turtle? Well, for this, we are gonna specify the write command, okay? So I'm gonna write down write. And just like with the forward command, we need to add two brackets here. And inside of these brackets, we are not entering a distance for pixels, rather we are entering in an angle, okay? So in terms of degrees, um, how many degrees do we want to turn right? Now, let's just say we want to create a square, for example, and so in that case, we would enter in 90. So we can click run, and you can see here that it is gonna execute the forward command first, like so, and then it is gonna rotate right 90 degrees. So you can see this little arrow right now, which is specifying the position and orientation of our turtle is now pointing downwards, okay? Because forward direction was moving to the right, um, we then rotate right 90 degrees, so we are now facing down. And then from here, we can go to a new line and enter in the forward command once more. And let's, en let's enter in 100 pixels. So what we should see is sort of like an upside down L. Let's click run and see it in action. And there we go. So our turtle has executed the first forward command, moving forward 100 pixels then rotating right 90 degrees, and then moving forwards 100 pixels again, okay? But the forward direction is different, so that's why we have this L shape like so. And this is the basis of all algorithms in computing, okay? Basically, we are giving our computer a list of commands and it is executing them in a specific order, in order to get a result. And learning to code with Turtle is really great as it actually gives us um, not just a result, but a visual result. So we can instantly see on our screen here what has happened due to the commands of our code. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be having a bit of a challenge. And the challenge I want you to do is creating a square algorithm inside of Python Turtle. So I want you to go ahead and set up an algorithm that is going to allow our turtle to draw out a square, okay? So four sides. And for the specifications, I want each side of the square to be 50 pixels long. So we're creating a 50 by 50 pixel square. So here we are inside of our project. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be separating this into a separate file, okay? Just to keep everything nice and tidy. So over here in files, I'm gonna create a new one by clicking on this button right here. And I'm just gonna call this one uh, intro lesson. And inside of this code or inside of this file, I mean, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to main.py, which is where we have been writing our code so far. I'm gonna copy what we've done right here and paste that into intro lesson. So control C, control V like so. And then we can return back to main.py and remove all of the code and start from scratch. Now, the reason why is because main.py is the file that gets run when we click the run button right here. Um, so I'm just gonna keep track of all the previous code we've done, you know, just so you can refer back to it later on. So main.py. So now we are here in a blank file and I want you to go ahead and try and attempt the challenge. Let's see how you go. Okay, so I hope you had to go at the challenge. So let's get started with finding out the result. 
So pretty much we first of all want to import turtle because otherwise none of the commands are going to work. So first of all, we want to go from turtle import asterisk. Okay. From the turtle library, we want to import everything. Then for our first line, I'm going to write forward 50. Okay. So we're moving forwards 50 pixels. Let's run that to see how it goes like so. Then we want to rotate right 90 degrees and that is going to move us forward, then right. And then after that, we can move forward again, 50 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Make sure we are going along the right line. Yep, there we go. So we're moving like that. So we've already, we've already created half of our square right now. Then we just need to rinse and repeat. Okay, we're gonna rotate right 90 degrees once more. We can move forward 50 pixels, right 90 again, and then forward another 50 pixels. And this should result in us returning back to our original position, okay? And we click run and there we go. So yeah, this is just a nice little algorithm that is going to allow us to create a square. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can create circles for our Python turtle algorithms. Now, unlike with creating a square, we don't have to list out a bunch of commands. Instead, to create a circle, we just need to enter in one, and that is the circle command, like so. Um, now, inside of these brackets, we can then enter in a radius for the circle. So let's just say we want to have a 50 pixel radius, and we can click run. So let's see what happens. And as you can see here, we have gone ahead and drawn our first circle. So the way this works is we have our turtle starting here, right? It is facing, we can see with the little arrow, it's pointing in the right direction. Now, what happens when we call that circle command is that our turtle moves forward and left, okay? So it draws the circle to its left. So you can see here with our uh, turtle, um, it has gone and drawn the circle with a 50 pixel radius. Now, that means that the diameter of the circle is 100 pixels because the radius is basically the distance from um, the center of the circle to the edge. Now, let's move our turtle to the right and draw another circle so we can have sort of two eyes, okay? So what I'm going to do is after that we draw our first circle, I'm going to move forward and let's say I'm going to move forward, uh, let's go 100 pixels and then we can draw another circle of 50 pixels diameter. So let's click run again and see what happens. We draw our first circle, we move right, uh, we move forwards, I mean, 100 pixels because our turtle is facing right, and then we draw another circle. So you can see how this specific order of commands runs this code in order to create this result. Now, for example, if we have forward, let's just say as the first command, you'll see that we have an entirely different output. Okay, this is the output right here. So you can really see how um, the organization and the order of your commands are very important in providing a specific result for your algorithm. So yeah, that is the circle command and we'll be using that in the future lessons. Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are gonna be looking at how to use colors inside of Python Turtle. So right now we have just been drawing with our turtle and it has just been leaving a black trail behind it. Now that might be nice if you want to create black and white art, but generally you want to add some color. So how do we do that? What we need to do is we need to enter in the color command. And what the color command does is it changes the color of our pen. Now you can think of the pen as somebody, you know, you've got a piece of paper and you're basically tracking the movement of the turtle with a pen. And when we call the color command, that's basically changing the color of our pen. So to give an example, let's go ahead and just enter in forward 100, okay? Hit run. And this, you know, just like before, it's gonna move our turtle forwards um, 100 pixels. But as you can see, it is leaving a black line behind it. So how do we change the color of that? Well, we need to enter in the color command. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna enter in the color command after forward because otherwise nothing's going to change. If we want to change the color of something, we need to make sure that we are doing so before we call that command. So just above forward here, I'm going to enter in the command color and inside of the two brackets, we can enter in a color. 
So the way we enter in a color is by adding in two quotation marks like so, um, and we can then write a name. So let's just say we want to have red. So make sure it is between two quotation marks and you should see that the text here does change to this dark orange color. We can then click run. And as you'll see, we have now drawn a red line. Now look what happens if I remove this color and move it underneath forward and click run. What happens then is that only after we have moved forward 100 pixels do we change the color, okay? So the, so the code never jumps back in time to change something, okay? It's always moving forward one step at a time. So let's move that back up here like so. Um, and we can enter in other colors as well. So we have blue, for example, and pretty much any named color you can think of, yellow, red, uh, black, white, green, um, any of those sort of colors will generally work. Although when it comes to more complex colors, you might want different shades of something. Um, for example, there is light blue that you can enter in like so. And that is going to, of course, make it a light blue color. Although if you want, you know, maybe a light blue that's a bit darker, you know, it doesn't really have a name. Um, so it is quite limited in the sense of giving named colors. But what you can also do is add in hex colors. Now, using a hex color is a great way of telling the computer what specific color you want to render on screen. So a good way of finding some colors is just by Googling color picker. And by default, you should have the Google color picker popping up like so. And this basically allows us to choose a color from the hue wheel here. And we can also choose the saturation value. So let's choose a, uh, we're going to make a nice orangey, let's make a nice golden color like so. And down here, you'll see hex and this string right here. Okay, so it's got a hashtag FFD000. Now to us, that doesn't really make much sense. You don't look at that and identify a color. But if we give that to a computer, it is able to sort of decode that and provide us a color to use. So I'm going to copy this right here, control C, go back to our code and paste it inside of the color command. Still making sure that it is surrounded by the quotation marks and make sure to include the hashtag because that is what identifies this string of uh, letters and numbers as a hex color. We can then click run. And as you can see, it now has that golden color that we selected. And also with colors, we can change it throughout our algorithm. So we can have a forward of gold, then we can paste a new one here just under forward, let's go ahead, choose a different color. Um, let's try and get a nice green. So I can copy that, put that in like so. And then let's say we want to rotate right 90 degrees and then move forward uh, another 100 pixels, okay? And as you can see, we have changed color throughout our drawing. So we have initially set the color to be gold. We've moved forward 100 pixels. Then we have changed the color of our pen, right? So we've swapped out what pen we're using to now a green one. Uh, we've rotated right and moved forward with that, okay? So it is very important that you do list out these commands in a specific order for it to run the way that you wish.